and I'll pick up again ready to cross the Seine into the northeast corner of Upper Normandy and I'll throw in the usual caveat here I have no idea how far east this map is going to go or how far south but I am going to cross the Seine just to see what's up here if uh, for no other reason just as an academic exercise now let me back out here and I'm going to bring up another reference map just to get some context for where we're at and the overall flow of the ground battle here so we've looked at everything up to the Seine, and this big blue line here is the 25 August line, with the 1st Canadian Army to the north, 2nd British Army just to the south of that, and then the American 1st and 3rd Army off the map at this point. So we have looked at Argenton, Alençon airfields, we've seen stuff around Evreux. So from the 26th to the 10th of September, the line up here, pretty much at the Dutch and German border, so basically, after the 10th of September, we're off the Normandy map and heading up into Belgium, with U.S. and British forces moving into a lot of these air bases that we've been looking at so far. But yeah, June, July, August, back here, I could not be more pleased with this area that we're getting for a map area that's feasible in size for a team to put together in the first place. It just really seems to me, in retrospect, to be the obvious spot. I mean... It would be nice to have everything, but if you're going to pick a place to start at, yeah, I, I definitely think that was a good choice, whether that was a conscious decision on somebody's part to do that, or if that just happened to be uh, what the team wanted to do just at random. Okay, so let's go ahead and cross the Seine here, and we saw on the map that the Germans held the port at Le Havre for a while, and that would have included, uh, according to the map at least, the Octaville airfield so this is the one that we're going to start with and let's go to the book and see what we can see so there we go original field just a small landing ground and then served as an important fighter station mainly during june of 40 to may of 42 by then the raf's umbrella of air superiority over the airfield was such that the luftwaffe could no longer station units there so i've marked this one as red and i'm going to back out and we'll just press on to saint vigor de yonville and this appears to be a sand or a gravel quarry now, and it was a landing ground prepared by the Germans in October, but no evidence that was ever used. And March of 44, a landing area remains permanently obstructed with trenches. So that one's definitely in the red category. And I'm going to turn slightly to the north to Menuville la Goupil. So we have a landing ground laid out by the Luftwaffe as a forward airstrip in 1940, but not used. Other than possibly as an emergency landing ground seemed to be permanently obstructed with trenches in November of 43. So that's another red field. And up the coast to Ficomp, and we have a series of four landing grounds up here. The document, I remember as I was putting this down, didn't break these out into individual fields. So let me see what the story was here. And yeah, simple enough, landing grounds that were known to have been there, but no records found of any Luftwaffe units being based out of either of those. Now let's go slightly to the northeast, and then we'll go back down towards the Seine. We'll go to Palel, and this does have still a runway that looks kind of old right there, so let's see what the story is here. And this one is another one that due to its proximity to the coast was just not feasible to be used by the Luftwaffe. It existed as a French military airfield in 39, plowed and rendered unserviceable in June of 40, but the Germans restored it July 41, the Luftwaffe begins construction of a concrete runway and over the next six to eight months completed and began work on a second runway. These plans were canceled in spring of 42. The airfield was abandoned except for a small caretaker and guard contingent. No aircraft ever noted there between 41 and 43 and the runway was blocked with obstructions. So this might be, in fact, the original concrete runway just laid out in blocks like that. I kind of doubt it. That looks, unless it was maintained afterwards, quite a bit afterwards, that just looks like it's in too good a shape to be an original World War II concrete runway, but yep, there we go, and yeah, like I, like I said, right there near the coast, and we're getting, as we get further and further to the north and to the east, closer and closer to the British airfields, and, and I'll pull up the ruler and bring it down here, so, you know, from the nearest point on the coast, we're looking at now 60, 65, 70 miles or so down to here. Okay, so let's go down to the Seine and Caudebec and Ka and see what's here. I think this is a seaplane location. And yes, minor seaplane station on the Seine. No evidence found of Luftwaffe seaplanes or flying boats here. Okay, so 
uh, down towards Rua, and we have an airbase here that is still here. So this could have possibly at the time been a pretty major airbase. Let's see what this says. So landing ground, very active from May to June of 40, but rapidly fell into disuse, obstructed in 42, and sometimes used again for short-term operational purposes. And then we have some dates down here from 44. In April, the landing area temporarily obstructive, may have also been trenched. And June of 44, landing area seemed to be fully obstructed, so definitely not going to be used, although that was obviously a pretty good location for a field because that did turn into a main airport right there by Rouen. So let's go to Bacaville. So field airstrip or landing ground operational in 41 and not listed in allied directories. So this one is not going to concern us. Let's go down the Seine and hit Le Fillier. This is a landing ground briefly used by the Luftwaffe in June of 40. No records found of subsequent Luftwaffe use. This one is red. Now let's go just slightly to the north. And former landing ground, no records found of Luftwaffe use. Now let's go to the east, just soar, and see what we have here. Not much info on this one, but I'll mark it as green anyway. No record found of use by the Luftwaffe, but listed as operational in June of 44. So, well, provisionally I'll mark this one green. I think that one's so far to the east anyway that it's not really going to play into anything that we're doing here and that's really going to go for the rest of these they are just a little bit too far to the east but I do for curiosity's sake want to look at these airfields up around Dieppe so I'll press on here and hit these two in close proximity and this is an alternate landing ground or emergency landing ground no record of use and I'll come straight on over to the west check out this one I think it's going to be the same and only used for a few days and then obstructed or returned to cultivation. Okay, fair enough. Now let's head to the north to Pier Mint and see what we see here. And this one's just a dummy airfield. And I've got to go back and double check a lot of these. I'm going to make one more pass of this without giving the commentary. I'm missing a lot of stuff given the commentary. And I have a lot of stuff that I could organize better and backfill on the little file that I have going here because I the remarks section down here, if it's a case where it's under the satellites and decoys section, I was, I think, initially going by the remarks, but the remarks actually apply if I go up a page to the main airfield. So that's that. Now we're just down to airfields up around Dieppe. Although I will hit this little oddball out here and landing ground briefly used after June of 1940 and then relegated to an active caretaker status. Okay, so that's that one. Now let me come over to the Dieppe area itself. And have a look at these. Okay, I'll start right here at Bertrandville. And pasture land may have been used briefly by the Luftwaffe in June of 40. Maintained as a dispersal field for Pilel in spring of 40 until spring of 40 and then inactivated and obstructed. Got it. Now let's come down slightly to the southwest to St. Mards. And used by the Luftwaffe in 40 but no units are known to have been stationed there. And definitely return to cultivation by 1942. Okay, now the rest of these are going to be associated with a main airfield at Dieppe. And I'm going to assume that this was the main airfield and that the rest are just satellite strips. So let me dig into this real quick and see what's what here. Okay, so long story short on the Dieppe complex here. This would have been very active in the Battle of Britain, but it's another one of those cases where it's too close to England to have been feasible post-1940-1941, the only one that could have possibly been active, as it's listed here, is this one, a landing ground, possibly a satellite for DF St. Aubin, but listed as operational in June of 44, so possibly something like naval reconnaissance, small-scale operation going out of there, but that's the story on that entire complex, so... Backing out and looking at the entire situation here. Now, we know that on the map we're going to get Evro, the main airfield at Evro, just included by default, and that'll give us the option of if and once that ability to add smaller scale airfields in the mission editor comes around to add the satellite fields at Evro, that's going to be really the main base in the area. Some other stuff scattered around Conch, another complex, large complexes, but I mean the key here is that it's not going to be like large-scale operations that really, from what I can see here, any of these locations. It's going to be small operations scattered around 
a lot of these different areas with maybe the larger skill operations being back there and then the closer you get to the lines, especially once the campaign gets rolling along, then probably the smaller the operation, now con, none of those airfields are a factor, and the only one that I could find anything about activity up around Cherbourg was just the one airfield, and that's not going to last too long just until Cherbourg falls. So that is where I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to make just on my own one more pass through the document just to redo some of the format. I think instead of just picking and choosing, I'll probably just copy the entire block of information and put it under each of these entries because when I put stuff together like this, it isn't just for one project. I mean, I'm going to be using this for, well, anything that it will be useful for for years and years. So I'm going to put some more time into this and then make this available to anyone who wants to check it out. And it'll probably take me less time to do that than it will to get these videos all cut together. So you'll be able to go straight to the link in the description and see what the final version of this is. So I can't wait to get in here and start to mess around and actually see this stuff from the air. And that's, to me at least, what wargaming and flight simming is all about. I mean, I'm an old aircraft maintainer. I couldn't care less about piloting, pilot culture, being a pilot. It's all about just putting myself into these historical situations and gaining the insights that doing things in flight sim or wargaming out the situation provides because once we do get this area, it's going to be a whole different story. I may think that I have a pretty good idea of how the flow went, how things happened, but once I see it from the air, then I'll be able to go back and read accounts, you know, read all this documentation that I've been going through, and it'll just put a completely new perspective on it. And that is what I get out of Flight Sims and Wargaming and all the other stuff that I do here. So I think this is a good stopping point. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.